Isaiah chapter 58, verse 1. Cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and show my people their transgression. Read it again from the top. Cry aloud. Do what? Cry aloud. And that's what we come out here to do. We came out here to cry aloud to the black man. We came out here to wake the black man up and right. get him up out of this uh, estate that he in, right. the slum that he in. Right. Read. Spare not. Do what? Spare not. And we're not coming out here to spare your feelings according to this Bible. If you want to miss the sin and we see it, we going to point it out. That's right. All right, read. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet. Do what? Lift up thy voice like a trumpet. I don't know if your brothers and sisters know, but a trumpet is a loud instrument. The Bible commands us to lift up, lift up our voice. We're speaking the words of the Most High. All right, read. And show my people their transgression. And we're going to show you your sins. Why you don't read the Bible, bro? Not sure. You're not sure? My parents weren't really into the Bible. Yeah. So it was like it wasn't a custom of yours then. Yeah, it wasn't a custom. Okay. You want, do you understand this Bible is the book of our uh, resurrection from this place? Uh, the book the book that gives us deliverance from this place. If you read the Bible and apply what's in it, you don't understand that this will lift you and your people up? Which one? That's the King James Virgin Bible. The Old Testament? The Old and the New Testament. Yeah. Why we read the Old and the New Testament? Give me Hebrews 10 and 4 real quick. I'm going to show you why we must read the Old and the New Testament. Because you, you have Jesus Christ. You believe in him? Hey, you see this? You, you believe in Jesus Christ? Okay. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 7. Then said I, lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do thy will, O God. So this is Christ saying he come in the volume of the book, meaning the Old and the New Testament. That's why we must read both of the uh, Testaments. You understand that? So that's why we read it like that, Old and New, all right? So, but I was, what I was asking is that you said your father's American black, which means you would come from the, uh, the, line, the, the seed line of Judah, all right? Have you ever heard of that before? You heard the children of Israelite from the tribe of uh, Judah? Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to show you out of the Bible that uh, that you are, you're an Israelite. You Give me that in Deuteronomy 28. Verse, uh, verse 1. Start at verse 1. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. So who is this talking? This is Moses. I know you said you're not familiar with the Bible, but we're going to speed you up. This is the, this is Moses. The brother Moses is telling the nation of Israel, we had just came up under the hand of Pharaoh. Pharaoh was a, sta a slave master, and he had us all in, under hard bondage, right? So this is Moses after he gave us the deliverance deliverance from under that guy's hand he's telling the nation of Israel which is all 12 of these tribes he's saying if you obey my commandments all these what oh. if you obey if you obey if you observe to do all his commandments which I command thee this day that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth so you hear that God said he was going to set us above all nations on the earth if we was to hearken and listen to his commandments so when you examine the black man today, are we above all the nations of the earth or are we under the nations? When you observe how the black man live today. Middle. In the middle. So when you go, when I when I went up the question, I'm gonna ask you like as as far as what laws do we pass? What um what do we what authority do we have above, uh, in this in this in this land right here? Or do we get dictated to? Are we do we do the dictating or we are getting dictated to? The second. the second, so we being dictated to, meaning we under the, what I'm trying to show you is that we are under the nations. We not above like the Bible just said, but it was something that happened. Go ahead. Hey, stay right here for me, man. Hey, let, let me tell you how important your nationality is, right? I want Matthew chapter 3 verse 2. I'm getting right back to you. This is how important it is to understand who you are and why it's the most important thing to know on this earth matthew 3 and 2. verse 2 and saying repent ye for the kingdom of heaven is at hand so this is john the baptist talking he said repent 
for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom of heaven is rulership on this earth. All right. So now I want you to go to Acts chapter 1 and verse 6. Let's see who the kingdom is for. Because we understand that the kingdom of God, which is heaven, is forever and ever and ever, right? You understand that? Read what you got. Acts chapter 1, verse 6. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? The kingdom to who? The kingdom to Israel. So this is the disciples talking to Christ. And they said, Lord, when you come back on this earth, when are you going to give the kingdom to Israel? In the Christian church, we're taught that the kingdom of heaven is for everybody. But the disciples just asked Christ right here, who is the kingdom for? Uh, he said, when are you going to give the kingdom back to Israel? So that's why it's very important to understand who you are on this chart. Because if you're not on this chart, the kingdom is not for you. Now, I want you to go to uh, Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 3 Because This is why we're out here And we're asking brothers and sisters Hey, what's your nationality? Hey, where do you see yourself on this chart? Because when you find yourself on this chart It's things that are required of you But today, this is where we are reading today Isaiah 1 and 3 The book of Isaiah chapter 1 verse 3 uh -huh. The ox knoweth his owner and the ass his master's crib. Uh -huh. But Israel doth not know. My people doth not consider. You hear that? God says an ox, which is a dumb animal, knows you can drop him off 10 miles from the house. Eventually, he's going to get back home. He said a donkey. What did he say about the donkey? And the ass his master's crib. Uh -huh. no, excuse me. The ox knows his owner. So if you put an ox in the middle of a thousand people, he knows who his owner is. The donkey knows uh, how to get back to his house if you drop him 10 miles away from the house. But he says, my people Israel, who the kingdom is for, they don't even know who they are. Why is that? Why don't we know who we are? Yeah? Brainwashing. And guess what else? Propaganda. And guess what else? Slavery. And that's what the brother was going over with you. Israel doesn't know who they are through slavery. Now we think we're American blacks, West Indian blacks, Haitians, Puerto Ricans, Cubans, Dominicans. But God says we are the Israelites from the 12 tribes of Israel who the whole earth was created for. So as the brother's going to bring out to you, with that information that we know with Israel now, now there are things that are required of us in order to get that kingdom. So, yeah, go back. So you understand that, bro? What's your name, by the way? Lorian. Lorian? Okay, so what he was just going over is that the kingdom is for us and how we're going to get it back. We're going to show you why it was taken from us, though. Go back to Deuteronomy 28. Go back to Deuteronomy 28 and verse 15. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So you understand that, Lord? So the Lord is telling the nation of Israel, if you don't hearken, means listen. If you're not listening to the words that's coming out of my mouth, all these curses are going to come upon you. So when you examine us, we didn't listen, bro. We did not listen to Moses when he gave us the commandments. You gonna... All right, so I'm gonna prove that real quick. You go to, go to Daniel chapter nine, verse eleven. I'll show you what happened to us. Daniel chapter nine, verse eleven. Daniel chapter nine, verse eleven. Bring it up. Yeah, all Israel have transgressed thy law, even by departing, that they might not obey thy voice. See that? So Moses said, if you don't listen to me, all these curses go, gonna come upon you. Now Daniel was telling you that we did not listen. So then we gonna now we gonna get into some curses. That happened to us. Bring right? it up. And we gonna what we doing right now is proving to you that we the nation of Israel. I right, read. Uh, give me verse sixteen. Verse sixteen. Deuteronomy chapter twenty-eight, verse sixteen. Okay. Cursed shall thou be in the city, and cursed shall thou be in the field. So one of the curses is that since we didn't listen, cursed shall you be in the city. So that's why everywhere you go, when you see 
the black man, the Hispanic man, we are at a lower state in every city when you see us, when you examine the city. So, for example, Chicago, when you go there, we as a people, as Kurtz, you have a few of our people that make, uh, that have uh, little little things that's going on with them, but as a majority, we are Kurtz. Do you understand that? Right. So he said, Kurtz shall you be in the city. So when you go to L.A., we in the, with the same condition. When you come to Atlanta, we in the same condition. Right. Wherever you travel, when you see our people, we are cursed in the city. Why? Because God said it. Right. Read. Verse 17. And cursed shall thou be in the field. And cursed shall you be in the field. We will be cursed as a people in the field, bro. Gloria, when, when, when was we cursed as a people in the field? When we brought here, what was we doing in the fields? What was we doing in those fields? What was our job? We were picking cotton. You ever heard of that? We were picking cotton and we didn't get no pay for it. That's a curse. Anytime you work, you're supposed to get paid. God said you would be cursed in the field. We were picking cotton and get, get nothing. Okay, sugar cane was one, another thing we was, how we was cursed in the field. When you examine our, our Northern Kingdom brothers, or our Hispanic brothers, they had to pick sugar cane. And they went, they went through the same, so they went through the same atrocities that we go through. But God said, why? Because we don't listen to his commandments, all right? What? Give me verse uh, 46. Verse 46. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder. So what's going to be upon us? The curses. The curses going to be upon us for a sign and for a wonder. What? All right, read. And upon thy seed forever. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfully. So he said, the reason why these curses are upon us, because we didn't serve the Lord our God with, for abundance of heart, for the, excuse me, for joy, for joyfulness of heart and abundance of all things. All right? These are why these curses God put up upon us. Because originally the whole earth was supposed to be given to us. When you read, when you go back, jump back up in the chapter of Deuteronomy 28, you go through 1 through verse 14, it tells you about all the blessings, which is rulership on the earth. All right? But when you read 15 on down to 68, it's talking about curses. Right. We, right now, as a people, are under the condition of 15 through 68, right. under the curses of God. All right? You understand that? So, jump to, read on, read on. Verse 48. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee, in hunger, and in thirst, and in nakedness, and in want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. So one of the one of the curses is that read it again from the top. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies. So we got enemies. God got enemies, and we got enemies as a people. And it's gonna explain to you in this verse who our enemies is. But one of the curses we're gonna have to serve our enemies, read. Which the Lord shall send against thee. Who sent them against us? The Lord shall send against thee. Why? Uh, Julie, is it Julius? Lorian? Why, Lorian? Why the Lord send our enemies against us? But not listening. Listening to what? What? God's commandments. We don't. In hunger and in thirst. Read it again from the top, sorry. Therefore shall thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee, in hunger and in thirst. Meaning, if you're hungry, you got to serve your enemies to be able to get food. All right. One condition of how we served our enemies when we go back to when we related back to the cotton fields, we had to serve our enemies. We didn't get paid, but they did feed us, and we didn't work for free. Again, that's a curse. Read on. And in nakedness, it said. So if we want food, we got to serve our enemies. What's the name of these grocery stores y'all got out here? Y'all got Costos. So you got you know what I mean? Costos. Who own those? Who's own those grocery stores? Yeah, the white man, the so-called white man, own those stores. Costco's, Jewels, Dominic's, Walmart, anything where we got, anything where you, we have to go to get our food, we got to get it from a nation that hate us, our enemies, all right? Read. And in want of all things, and he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. Okay, so we want food, water. I mean, excuse me, said food, what else is it? And in thirst. And in thirst, meaning water, okay, read. And in nakedness. And in nakedness, meaning clothes, you know, the clothes on your back. We don't own the textiles that make those uh, clothes. You got them. You understand that we have to go to a nation that is our enemy in order to get these things. Because why? Just because we won't apply simple commandments. All right, read. And in want of all things. Uh, and in, in all things, meaning education, a death certificate, a birth certificate, 
You understand that? All things that you can think of that you desire, you have to go to a nation that hates you to get it, read. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. And he shall do what? He shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. So he shall put a yoke of iron upon your neck. Who put these yokes of iron upon our necks? What nation of people? Who, who put the yokes of iron? It was a nation yes, of people right that put these yokes of iron on our neck. Yeah, that means the white, uh, white uh, the, the so-called white man. He the one who put these things upon us. All right, God. Okay, so again, it says until we have destroyed them, meaning when the yokes of iron come across our neck, we be destroyed as a nation of people. You understand that? He said, until he have destroyed thee, until he have destroyed thee. Now, when you look around at our people, we are at a lower state. Why? Because we've been destroyed. Read. Hosea, chapter 4, verse 6. My people are destroyed. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing that hast forgotten the law. The law, uh -huh. the law of thy God. You hear that, bro? So reason, reason being why we destroyed as a people, because we forget the laws and commandments of God. You understand that? Now we're going to go into some commandments of God on how you can do to clean up your every day-to-day -day walk. Because at the end of the day, salvation is for you. Do you like the state of your people? Do you like living like this? Do you even understand that you and your people are at a lower state in comparison to the rest of the nations, the other 17 that God created? Do you understand that? Not these 12. This, these 12 make up the nation of Israel. But you examine the rest of the nations God created, 18. You understand that? And we are underneath the rest of the nations on the earth. Uh, 1 Corinthians 11. 1 Corinthians 11. And, uh, you, you, know, you got it? Yes, sir. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 4. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonored his head. Yes, sir. Okay, so it said every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. Who is the head of man? You know that? Jump up in the uh, chapter. Verse 3. But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ. And the head of the woman is the man. So who is the head of man? Christ. Jesus the Christ. The black Messiah is the head of man. So now jump back to verse 4. Verse 4. Every man praying or prophesying, Having his head covered. So right now, Lord, we are in the midst of prophecy right now, bro. Alright? So read it again. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered. So we are in the midst of prophecy, Julie. Uh Julian. So you're supposed to take the head off. You understand that? Why why the prophet is prophesying, alright? Read it again. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered. Dishonor his head. So you dishonor your head. When you, okay, you, you dishonor your head. It's all good, brother. But the, the, the point is that you have to take your head off. All right. While the, while the word of God is coming out, you got to take your head off. All right. You understand that? Yeah, people always tell me I never knew why. Yeah, now you know why. Now you know why. All praise. That's so the sign of repentance, bro. So you, 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 have a, you have a repentant spirit, all right? Is that it on? Now give me the Sabbath day, Exodus. So, because it's commandments, it's the Sabbath. Go ahead, read. Exodus chapter 20, verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. So, he says six days. It's seven days of the week. The Lord gave you six days to work and do all your labor. Read. But the seventh day, the seventh day, which you just acknowledged, which, which is which is what day? Saturday. That's the seventh day. Read. Is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God? In it thou shalt not do any work. So what is today? Saturday. So which would mean what? Which means today is the Sabbath day. So you're not you're commanded not to work because the seventh day, which is the Sabbath day, is holy and separate in comparison to the other six days. You understand that? So on this Sabbath day, the Lord got instructions on how you keep his day holy. One of the instructions or the commandments on this particular day is you not to work. You understand that? Read. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. So that's one commandment. You not to work on, on the Sabbath day, which is Saturday. Now give me uh, another. Yeah, 35 and 3. Exodus chapter 35, verse 2. Six days shall work be done, 
but on the seventh day there shall be to you an holy day, a Sabbath of rest to the Lord. Whosoever doeth work therein shall be put to death. Verse 3, ye shall kindle no fire throughout your habitations upon the Sabbath day. So just like we went over earlier, it said the same thing. You should not do any work in there. But at this particular time, you got put to death if you work on the Sabbath day. Do sure. uh, you understand that? But now another commandment on the Lord's Sabbath day is you're not to do what? Read that part again, verse 3. Ye shall kindle no fire throughout your habitations upon the Sabbath day. So, it says you shall not kindle any fire upon your habitation, meaning where you dwell at, upon the Lord's Sabbath day. What does that mean? No fire. No fire. You shall kindle no fire. We're going to show you what it means, precept upon precept. What is that going into? All right, read. Exodus chapter 16, verse 23. And he said unto them, This is that which the Lord hath said. Tomorrow is the rest of the holy Sabbath unto the Lord. Bake that which ye will bake today, and seethe that ye will seethe, and that which remaineth overlay, overlay up for you to be kept until the morning. All right, so we're going to read it again from the top. Listen good. And he said unto them, This is that which the Lord hath said. Tomorrow is the rest of the Who said it? That this is which the Lord have said. Tomorrow is the rest of the Holy Sabbath unto the Lord. Bake that which he will bake today. So he's telling them, prepare your food on that Friday. Okay? Because the next day is the Lord's Sabbath day. So you can't cook. Well, you can't kindle the fire. So he's telling you, bake because the Lord don't want you not to eat. He wants you to eat, but he's telling you to prepare your food properly because this is my holy day that I got set aside. You understand that? Read. And see that ye will see. And cook or boil what you're going to boil, read. And that which remaineth over lay up for you to be kept until the morning. So those are called leftovers. He's telling you that's what you eat because you can't kindle a fire on that seventh day. So these are rules or instructions on how to keep today holy or the seventh day holy. One, one rule is what? What was the first one? Now that that's a commandment. That's talking about when the when the prophecy is coming out, or when you're reading the Bible. We're talking about it, the Sabbath day in particular. Not work is one. What's the other one? Just went over. Which means work. Right. Which means what? You can't cook. Correct. All right. On the Sabbath day. Now, give me uh, Nehemiah ten. Now we're going to show you another uh, rule on how you keep the Lord's Sabbath day set apart from the rest of the days. All right? These are ways, the reason why we're going over this, bro, these are ways that you're going to repent. Okay? Because like the officer was going over, the kingdom of heaven is for you. You can't get the kingdom of heaven being a brother that's breaking the Sabbath. You can't get the kingdom of heaven like that. So these are going to clean you up. All right? Mm. Nehemiah chapter 10 verse 31. And if the people of the land bring where or any victuals on the Sabbath day. Which day? On the Sabbath day. Today, read. Really? To sell. To do what? To sell. So if you actually, if you're selling on the Lord's Sabbath day, you're in the midst of sin. And you ain't the kingdom of heaven, you can't get it. When Christ returns, if you're still doing that, you're getting put to death. Well, All right? So if you're selling oils on the Lord's Sabbath day, you're getting put to death. If you're selling shea butter on the Lord's Sabbath day, if you buying on the Sabbath day, these things are going to get you put to death by the Lord. Read. That we would not buy it of them on the Sabbath. Well, that we what? That we would not buy it on the, of, the, of them on the Sabbath. So if the people bring where of any victuals to buy, we ain't going to buy it on the Sabbath because we the nation of Israel and we keeping the commandments of God. You understand that? Or, Read. Or on the holy day. Or on the holy days, on the new moons, on the high holy days, and so forth. Read. And that, that's it, that's it. Okay, so you understand these are basic commandments on how you keep the Lord's Sabbath day holy, all right? We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark We on Paul's mission We out on the road Purple and gold From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana Sierra Leone 
144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we're men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.